folding screens are getting crazy. So here's what happened. My business partner Lee and I were long overdue for some phones. He went with something pretty safe. But me on the other hand, I'm a bit more risque. I saw the new Samsung Z Fold 7 on the list, didn't read any reviews, didn't compare specs, just said, yeah. When it arrived, I was flabbergasted because this thing is so freaking thin. I could barely wrap my head around it. And when I opened it up, I realized this thing is actually real glass. How on earth is this thing actually bending? That question sent me down a rabbit hole because the tech behind this thing breaks everything I know about physics. But before we explain how folding glass works, we've got to understand what makes any screen work. You see, every screen, your phone, your TV, your monitors, it's built from millions of tiny little dots called pixels. Each of these pixels have three subpixels, red, green, and blue. And together, they mix light to see every color we see. Traditionally, screens use a technology called LCDs, which is liquid crystal displays. It shines a bright backlight through all those color filters, which is great for TVs, laptops, and older phones, which are usually pretty rigid themselves. But not so great when you want something very thin and flexible, because that backlight usually can't bend. Then about a decade ago, OLED screens arrived. And instead of shining light through a panel, each pixel creates its own light. And while I'm simplifying this a bit, that also meant thinner screens. And more importantly, screens that could actually bend. We started seeing curved TVs, curved monitors, curved phones, all that came from OLED. But even with all those flexible displays, we still hit one big problem. The glass that's in front of the display. The screens might flex, but the glass on top, not so much. At least not until engineers did something wild. They started making the glass ultra thin. You see, when things are thick, like this piece of wood, it's tough and sturdy. And if I tried bending it, it would probably crack and eventually break. But if we cut into a super thin slice, we'd see that it actually starts to be able to bend pretty easily. Whatever. Which is exactly what they did to glass. When glass gets extremely thin, we're talking about 30 microns thick, which is about half of a human hair. Should I just pull a gray hair? <laughs> so many. Oh, that's a lot of hair. <laughs> its behavior starts to change. Instead of just shattering instantly, it can actually flex ever so slightly before it starts breaking. Samsung calls this the ultra thin glass or UTG, which is a little bit like magic at that scale. The atomic bonds in the glass can shift just enough to bend, but that alone isn't enough to survive years of folding. So engineers started layering it. On top of the glass, it's a polymer coating, a transparent flexible shield that absorbs tiny cracks before they start to spread. And underneath is an elastic adhesive and usually carbon fiber reinforcements, which help the display move without tearing itself apart. And then there's the special sauce. It's a mechanical masterpiece for all these devices. And it's this little hinge right here. Instead of a simple fold, it creates a teardrop curve. So the glass bends gently instead of this sharp angle every time you close it which means dozens of tiny little gears, cams, and links working together to spread stress evenly across the spine. That's how this thing can handle half a million folds before failing. Now, I didn't buy this phone because I needed it. I bought it out of curiosity. But the more I learned, the more I realized this isn't just a phone. It's a symbol of how far material science has come. It's a screen made of glass that shouldn't bend, but does anyways. A device that survives embracing flexibility instead of fighting it. But maybe that's the future. Not things that never break, but things that learned how to bend. Oh my god, I literally look like a trustworthy Asian dude. <laughs> so I needed to use my benefits, so I bought some glasses, and this is the first time I'm starting to really consider wearing glasses for real. Just regular Asian guy, probably plays tennis. Tech bro. <laughs> If you have any questions that you don't understand and want me to make a video about it, feel free to ask it in the comments below. And until next time, ciao.